ready. Good evening. Good evening, welcome. Good evening, Ms. Heather, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing well. Good. Hello, Ali, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much for your time. So we will go ahead and get started. I will do um, introductions. I'll put everyone on mute until we have um, q and A. I I am Heather Kelly. I am the marketing consultant with the Illinois SBDC at Rockford Chamber. Welcome everyone um, for attending this evening. Um, I hope you enjoy our presentation and have a um, you know, nice relaxing um, enjoyable time at it <laughs> since it's, we're now heading into the evening. Um, the SBDC is uh, a resource available um, in the Rockford area, also Boone, um, Stevenson, Ogle County, Winnebago as well. And we provide uh, no cost services to small businesses, startups, and existing businesses. Uh, we can help uh, in the areas of business planning. Um, we can help you help connect you with bankers and loans, um, also marketing um, and human resources. So we have those services provided to you. I will put our contact information in the chat so that you can contact us. If you're not already a client, um, please contact the SBDC for assistance. Um, this evening, we will uh, present how to start your business in Illinois. Again, um, we're going to provide you information with resources that are available to you. And um, I will give it over to Edward. Edward is our director with the SBDC, Edward Caceres. He has a great deal of expertise um, in this area. And I'll let Edward take it away. Hello, everybody. First of all, thank you very much uh, for being with us today. I just uh, know that um, uh, it's beautiful outside and you make a small sacrifice, you know, to stay here uh, and learn something about how to start your business in Illinois. So I'm going to make it direct to the point. And if you got questions, please write it in the chat and I will love to, you know, answer all of them at the end of the presentation. So Heather, can you allow me to share a screen so you why I have to do it? Good, so share a screen. Okay, so now let me put this on full screen. Perfect, uh, everyone can see the presentation, the, the slideshows? Okay, perfect. So today we are going to talk about how to start your business in Illinois, okay? So the purpose of this session is going to provide you with all the basic information that you need to start your business in the area. And if you are in business, provide you also with the tools to help your business grow. How we can make this possible in this BBC is because we got the right partnerships that can help you to achieve this goal. We are part of the Small Business Administration and work closely with the DCO. Our host is the Rockford Chamber of Commerce and we got offices in the Rockford Chamber of Commerce, Commerce and in the NIU building in Rockford. We work closely with the Rockford Public Library. Uh, we work with them uh, providing workshops. And, and also we work with the SCORE that is another group of uh, professionals, uh, professional advisors and the city of Rockford, of course. But before I start talking about the formalities, you know, about how to start your business, we need to start thinking about a, a kind of self, um, self analysis about yourself. If you are ready to start this journey, because a startup business is true, sounds really catchy, you know, be your own boss and all the things, but it's going to change your life. And you need to be aware of that. Most of the people is just excited with the idea of being your own boss, but you don't think about how this is going to change your life. First of all, you need to, if you are married, 
probably you are going to understand this much better because a startup business, or for example, a partnership is like a second marriage. You have to be honest, you have to be open, you have to be clear, you don't, you can hold hard feelings. There is too many things like in a marriage that you have to apply in the relationship that you are going to get with your partners if that is the case. You need to, and the second important thing, and in my case is the first thing that I'm always approached with my clients in our first one-on-one -on -one session when we are going to start, you know, for example, a business plan, is to start talking about how you are financially speaking, you know, to start a business. Are you ready? Um, everything is okay with you? Sometimes people don't understand that when you apply for a business, and the lenders are going to read about you, they read in between lines a lot of things in your credit report, your behavior for payments, you know, how much debt do you have? If you are responsible with your debt income ratio versus what your income provide you. So it's really important that you understand that part. It's also important that you inform yourself about reliable sources about funding. We got a lot of people that sometimes came to us asking for those grants, you know, to start us. Sadly, there is no start, you know, grants for startups. It's true that there are grants, but grants are a kind of tool that the government used to support a specific market niche through different, through different and specific situations. So in this case, you need to start thinking, okay, if there is no free money, you know, through the grants, which could be my other options. We are going to approach that ahead, but I just want to make sure that you understand that the most important thing that you have to take in consideration before I start thinking in a business is, are you able to face this? So some people is boring to work for, you know, for organizations that probably you already reach a kind of glass ceiling and your ideas, you know, sometimes nobody hear them, even if they are good. So there are many reasons why you probably want to start your business, but always it's important to evaluate yourself if you are ready for this life-changing situation. For good, don't get me wrong, I, I don't want to discourage you, but I just want to be sure that you understand that this is going to change your life and your routine. Another thing that you have to take in consideration is if personally you really enjoy change. The only constant in life and in business is change. And in especially in the last 10 years, you can see that technology play an important role in modernize the way that business are performing in order to be profitable, in order to reach different markets. So it's really important that you enjoy this process. It's like a, you are going to start a never ending career where the main goal is keep learning, which is good, which if you think about it, when you are a business owner and some people ask you questions, if you are able to handle questions because you are a knowledgeable person and know your industry, they are going to trust in you. So it's really important that you enjoy the process of continuous learning. Another thing that you have to take in consideration, another person is if you have a strong self-discipline. Start a business demand of being really, really, um, accurate when you make your calculations about time management, if you know, if you are will, going to be able to uh, reach the goals that you set up for yourself. And the most important thing is determine if you are not a procrastinator, because sometimes we didn't know that we are until we realize that many things are happening because we don't take the bull by the horns, you know, when is the right time. So those are the personal things that you have to take in consideration. So finally, we are moving forward into the landscape where you are going to start your business. So you have to evaluate if your business is addressing an underserved need. You know, if you are going to, for example, start a, a, a restaurant business, for example, you have to start thinking if the kind of cuisine that you are going to use have too much competition or no. It's like, a, for example, if I ask you guys, how many uh, uh, restaurants with a specialty in Mexican cuisine you know in the, in the area? Probably you won't tell me a bunch of them. But if I ask you how many Thai restaurants you know in town, probably you are going to tell me maybe two or three. What I'm trying to tell you is, if you are looking for a business, 
try to look for a kind of blue, o blue ocean, something that if it's, if it's true that you are going to face some competition, you are still with high opportunities to get a piece of that cake, you know, for your business. You know, another consideration that you have to take is uh, what you are providing is something that the market need desperately. It's like a, when we saw through the COVID-19, everyone was looking for face masks. And there was a, you know, nobody can provide you because everyone ran out. So that was, of course, an exceptional situation. But that is one of the cases that tell you, okay, this is an opportunity that you can take because the trends say that this uh, product or service is trending, you know, and is going to be in high demand for a while and deserve your attention for investment. So another thing is that you are going to get a, which one is going to be your uh, advantage over your competition? You are going to get a, a much better technology. Your, your business model is kind of a, a much better because reduce the overhead expenses. For example, now you can get a, a you know, just-in-time model production because now, for example, we got 3D printers, which can help you to create products just in time and doesn't mean that you now you have to you know, create and produce products that are going to be in a shelf waiting to be sold. So there is many things that now you have to take in consideration to see if you get some kind of advantage over your competitors. Of course, like any project, like every journey, you are going to face some challenges. Probably the biggest and the number one is how you are going to get some capital to start your business. You know, the second thing that you have to take in consideration is if what you are pursuing as a business probably is going to make it harder to get a regular loan from a regular bank. It's like, a, for example, years ago, uh, lenders didn't take care too much about the potential environmental effect of your operations. And between 2014 and 2016, I got the opportunity to work for the solar industry in California. And um, banks like a Wells Fargo, for example, as part of the due diligence in the lending process, they check if your operations, and you know, probably get some kind of impact in the future because are going to face some uh, environmental challenges because the regulations are changing. So if they perceive that probably you are in that path, they avoid to provide you that loan because, of course, it's a risk for the bank. And, it, and that is part of the evaluations that now in businesses and lenders are taking in consideration. What are the potential side effects or potential you know, detrimental effects in the environment, for example? There is um, some sounding or licensing issues in the area that probably you are planning to start your business. It's something that we can help you to figure it out. I'm going to explain you how uh, a little bit ahead. So with all these previous considerations, we start finally approaching the formal part of a start, uh, you know, your business in Illinois. We always recommend that the first step is start your business plan. Your business plan is a document that is first of all going to be your playbook. It's a live document that can evolve with your project. And the second most important reason to start your business plan is because it's the only document that uh, lenders, potential investors, or partners are going to look in order to understand your idea, how you are going to commercialize your product and service, and which is going to be the return for their investment. So start with a business plan, you know, is really easy. You can make it by yourself, or we can help you with that. In the SBDC, we got a software. The name of this software is Grow Wheel. And with Grow Wheel, what we can do is even work remotely with our clients and help them to create this electronically. So what they can do is working in their own computer in their own time. And every time that they are working on that, we can check from our end how they are doing. And if, for example, we notice that there is some uh, recommendation that we can provide, we can write electronic notes and let our you know, uh, mentees know exactly where they are or how they can improve things. You know, we can help it to describe the goods or services that you are going to provide in this business plan, how you are going to narrow down to the market niche, you know, determine who are going to be your competition, what are going to be your opportunities, how you, in especially in the part of the marketing plan, once you understand your market niche, you can tailor much better your marketing strategies. And especially in these times, 
that, for example, millennials are going to be overtake the baby boomers market in size. What that means is that now most of the businesses are foreseeing that, okay, millennials is a really interesting market niche that by volume are going to overtake the, the baby boomers and even the X generation. So knowing that is going to help you that, okay, if we are narrow down our market into millennials, probably we don't need too much printed media because most of the information for them came from their phones. So that is telling us also the kind of format that we might use to, uh, you know, to promote our business in our social media outlets like a Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, and all these kind of outlets. So understanding your competition and your market is going to help us to make a successful digital marketing plan for you. Also, we can help you to understand all the operations and HR uh, challenges that you are going to face, and especially in the aftermath of COVID-19 that many things change in the workplace. Understanding how to hire the right person is clever. If you ask me about uh, which one is probably the most important stage, you know, when you are looking for a new addition to your uh, organization is the hiring process. Because if you don't hire the right person for the position, you are going to carry with this situation for so long. And sometimes, you know, at the end, after spending several months with that person, she's going to leave the organization. And once again, you have to spend time and resources in retraining another person. So that's why, you know, even for example, in the SBDC, one of the professionals that we got, Mike Mastroianni, is our expert in HR and can help you to understand this process, like at the marketing process with, with Heather, for example. So understand your, your cost and how to generate revenue is really important. Um, I'm always told with the people about how important is understand your numbers. Most of the people uh, don't understand that if you don't understand your numbers, probably you are going to fail in the next two years. Because how you can make decisions if you don't understand your cash flow, you know, and how is you are going to spend your money, how how you are going to run your business if you don't know exactly the, the, the goal that you need to achieve in order to pay all your expenses and also make a profit. So all these kind of things are going to help you to understand the scope of your business. But the most important thing that I'm always tell my clients is sometimes you realize in your business plan that you don't have a profitable business. And sometimes it's a good idea to discover that in paper, that discover that in real life and screwing up with your, you know, with your uh, project because we didn't plan it properly how to start the business. And of course, in the business plan also, you are going to talk about how you are going to uh, fund your, your business. Of course, this leads us to the point of how, okay, probably, you know, I don't want to start a business with a debt. And I can tell you that there are, I know people that start their own business with less than $5,000. And now they are successfully running an online business. Um, they quit their jobs and now they can do it online. Not all the businesses need a lot of money. Not all the businesses need to work directly with a bank. I guess that every case is different and must be approached in that, you know, in that perspective. So it depends on of of your situation. Probably you can work with your own savings. You can ask for some friends and family funding. Uh, it depends. You maybe work with a bank or, pri or private angel investors or venture capital firms. So that is something that at the end also we are going to approach in the business plan. The other thing that you have to remember, and it's a quick reminder, is that it's important that you got a business plan with because that document is going to help you to open the doors, you know, with the city, with investors, and with other people because it's showing up that you are serious about what you are pursuing. Once you got all the things, the formal process of starting your business in Illinois began. So first of all, you have to decide what kind of legal entity you are going to be. Let's see that you decide to become an LLC. So you can go to the, to the cyberdriveillinois.com website and you can file it online. For example, an LLC costs just $150 to file your LLC and there is no more payments. 
I hear clients um, that told me that some people charge them 1500 to file their LLC. I believe that it's a little too much for something that is for free and you can make online. But if you got some issues or you need some kind of uh, advice about how to make it online, please contact us and we can help you to complete that virtually or in person. So in that way, you can use the another remaining money to pay another things, you know, instead to just pay 1500 for something that is $150. So the second thing that you have to, once you get your legal entity, you know, filed in, in the state, uh, it's time to start looking for a domain name for your business, which is highly recommend to try to uh, do that from the very beginning uh, and see if you get the luck to get a catchy name that you can use and everyone can memorize really easy, okay? Uh, create your logo, create your social media outlets. Uh, to start your business, your website now, you can make it by yourself, you can hire someone, or if you want, we can help you to create your website in the SBDC. That is part of the services that we provide. We can uh, create a website for you, uh, but you have to look for your uh, host and buy your domain name for that purpose. The third step that you have to go there is, of course, um, sign in for get your employee identification number. That basically is going to be like your social security for taxes for your business. To do that, it's also free. You can go to uh, the irs.gov website to get basically, you know, that information. And based on the kind of business that you are going to start, you know, uh, selling products or provide services, also you need to also complete, you know, for sales taxes and other things that you can find in the web uh, in the IRS website. Or once again, if you have questions, you always can come back to us and we can answer that for you. Once you got all these things done, you are ready to create your uh, business bank account which is highly recommend, you know, to get. Uh, so in that way, you can uh, separate your personal financial life from your business life. You know, a lot of people say, well, but I'm the business owner and I sometimes, no. You have to create two accounts and try to get separate your personal expenses from what your business is going to use. You can apply for, a, you know, for a credit card. It's also recommended. Um, be wise to use it if you got it. Um, after that, we highly recommend that you get your dance number. You know, the Dun & Brother Street uh, is like a, for us. When you apply for a, for a loan, the bankers are going to run your credit score in TransUnion, TransUnion or Equifax. So this place is like a, the, you know, the same, but for business. So if in the future your business is growing and you decide to work with another businesses, Probably another businesses are going to check, you know, in, the, in your dance uh, profile and see uh, if you are a good business and things like that. Because, you know, in these times, it's really important to uh, develop a network, but also it's important to know that there are reliable businesses that you can work with. The next step is set up your account. Um, at this point, I'm always recommend to our clients, and I never am tired to say that the first professional service that you need to hire is an accountant. An accountant is someone that is going to help you to make to, the, to do the right things. Is going to help you to avoid pitfalls because if you work closely with them and check your numbers every month, every quarter, they can help you to see in between line things that probably you can see. So working with an accountant is really important. Also, you have to do your due diligence. You know, I know that sometimes we saw in movies that the accountants receive clients that bring a um, shoebox full of receipts, you know, and say, okay, here is my, my information, take care of that. You have to be more, um, you know, more proactive. So there are softwares like, a, for example, QuickBooks that is part of Intuit that can help you to manage in a well-organized world from the very beginning all your expenses, your bills, and all these kind of things that are relevant for the financial uh, matters of your business. So we always recommend that try to get some kind of software that help you, even Excel, uh, you know, page that you can use to keep well organized your expenses is highly recommended. Once we reach this part, 
Um, for example, if you are looking for a, a, a place to start your business, you want to start a retail store or an office for your services, we, uh, we got a program that run with the city of Rockford that is business first. The web, the, the, the web link is in the bottom part. And basically what you can do with them is you got the opportunity to set up an appointment with all the professionals uh, in the area that in one way or another are related with permit and license in the city. For example, if you make an appointment because we meet every other Tuesday, so you, you got your appointment, you got half hour to explain your business idea to a panel that is going to be people from the city of Rockford, water reclamation, health department, SBDC. So based on what you are going to say in your pitch, everyone is going to tell you, for example, from the city of Rockford, okay, based on what you are telling me, these are, are the kind of permit and license that you need to apply. Those are the fees that you have to pay. And this is our business card if you have any question. From the reclamation, water reclamation, probably they're going to tell you the same. Okay, you are a restaurant, so the, you need a grease trap, and those are the basic requirements that you need to take in consideration. Those are the permits, fees, and this is our business card. The main idea is at the end of this meeting, you get the whole legal picture and fees to complete you know, the financial part of your business plan uh, about how and what are the things that you need to uh, complete before you start your business and don't face any compliance problem with the city. So that is something that we highly recommend you know, in the, almost in the uh, final stage. And of course, it's really important based on the kind of business that you have, get an insurance. You know, a lot of people don't think about it they don't believe that bad things could happen to them. But that is the thing that sometimes bad things could happen when you are, uh, you less expect that happen. And sometimes can kill your business. If you are going to start a drone business, you know, to take pictures and all these kind of things, look for the right insurance for your activity. If you are going to be in a kind of a consoling business, try to get some kind of a insurance that cover you in, in that kind of a, you know in that kind of career. So it's really important to take in consideration to get insurance. Even if you decide to be a LLC, that one of the main reasons why people pick LLCs is for liability reasons, because cover you in the case of something goes wrong, it's always recommended that you get an insurance for your business. And finally, you know, it's really important once you get all these things done. In especially in these times that, uh, the co in especially in the aftermath of COVID-19, that basically the, this situation uh, pushes us like a five or 10 years into the future. That means that start thinking in developing a digital marketing strategy for your business is not just an option anymore. It's a must be. And if you are not aware of that, uh, probably you are going to lose a lot of opportunities for your business and probably be out of business in two years because the, the trending is uh, aiming in that direction. So sometimes that's why I say that you must enjoy at the very beginning of this presentation, you must enjoy learning because it's the only way that you are going to overcome these new challenges that are going to be more technological relators than ever. So I just want to, uh, you know, before I uh, complete this presentation, just remember that the Small Business Development Center have an important role in our community. We help to build our communities. We support local businesses. And I believe that what make our uh, job really uh, a wonderful job is that we discover in the SBDC that we have the power to make people's dreams come true. When somebody came to us with a business idea, it's like they are bringing their, their baby to you. And they are jealous, they, you know, they are trying to be careful about the information that they are going to disclose with you. So that's why we are here, to help you to achieve these goals. And something important that we, uh, I want to disclose with you guys also is that all the services that we provide are free of charge. There is no catch. Every year that you guys pay your taxes, you are supporting this operation. So we are here uh, to work with you. To achieve this goal, we got four professionals in our team um, 
uh, probably we are going to increase our team since we know this that in the Rockford area, we got a huge demand for assistance to support local businesses, in, especially in the aftermath of COVID-19. Uh, myself, um, I got expertise in business planning, uh, renewable energies, I know how to make websites. Uh, myself, run businesses, I got 16, so I know, um, I got a, a good uh, idea about how a uh, start and running a business is. Mike is our expert in HR and leadership, also in management. Heather is our expert, expert in digital marketing and social media. And Vince is our accountant. So with all these skills combined, I believe humbly that we can provide you with all the uh, advice that you need to start your business. And unless you got um, any question, that will be all for today with my presentation. So if you got any questions, I guess that that will be the, the time. Okay, we'll open it up for questions. I have a question about uh... Uh, in the slide for the tax and bank account, which, which one we should be start first? Say it again, please. For the slide for the tax and bank uh, account, the business uh, bank account, which, which one we should be start first? What you have to do first is get uh, file your LLC. Once I you file your LLC, you immediately apply for your employee identification number. And once that also you can make it online in that order. And once you got your, uh, those documents that basically you are ready to knock the door of any bank and those are the, the basic documents that they are going to require to open your business account. So from the, from the legal point of view, that will be the, the order that you have to make. When I filled my LLC application, they did ask me about the agent, which one, uh, like, uh, so I put my address and uh, they they recommend for uh, like a lawyer, so. Uh, it's not necessary that must be a lawyer. What they are pursuing with this is that you provide with an address that no matter what is a secure address that they know that you are going to receive that information that they sent over. Is not something that the role that this person is going to play is more that they need a physical address that they can link with your business. And, uh, uh, I, I just missed some, something about the slide talking about the look for web host or uh, logo. The, the, third, the third item, I didn't see it, I just... Sure, we can go up. No, oh, sorry, I went too far. Okay, look for a web host, create your logo, and create your social media accounts. So that's so, social media, uh, sorry uh, for interrupting. Uh, that's no, no, social, media, social media accounts, you mean like uh, LinkedIn or uh, something LinkedIn, else? Facebook, uh, YouTube, Twitter. Just remember, Ali, that it depends on your business. You have to be wise in which ones you pick, because if not, what you are going to do is overwhelming yourself in trying to create content to feed multiple, uh, you know, uh, social media outlets. For example, you know, in the SBDC, we start looking uh, which ones bring more people, which ones, you know, uh, are better tools for us to approach our market niche. And we decide that for us, for example, of course, Facebook is a must be. LinkedIn, since we are working with professionals and entrepreneurs. Uh, YouTube, because of course we got a YouTube channel and through the COVID-19, we use that platform to create all the videos, record presentations. So in that way we can provide you with education and reliable information to our clients. And also we got Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Instagram is part of Facebook, so we kill two, um, two beers with a rock. Um, that is the way that we're working, but not for all, these, all the businesses, you need all these accounts. Some people working very well with a Facebook account and a link account. So it depends on your business. It's something that we discuss always with our clients when we are talking about how to develop their business plan and their social media strategy once the time arrives. 
Heather always, you know, approach that situation with our clients and provide them with the insights about which could be the best one. You know, I, there are some businesses that I saw that they got multiple outlets, Snapchat and things that even doesn't apply for the kind of business that they are running. You know what I mean? And instead to make uh, something good for your business is going to be a kind of burnout in the long run. Any other question, Ali, is clear or? Oh, thank you so much, thank you. Mm -hmm. And regarding about, you know, your logo and, and the web holes that you can use, most of the people, for example, why I place GoDaddy or Wix.com, for example, is because uh, they are a different kind of web uh, des uh, master designers or platform, different than, uh, for example, WordPress, that you need to understand a lot of programming and things to make your website and, uh, and keep them up to date. But with these new platforms, basically, if you know how to use um, PowerPoint, Publisher, um, you know, this uh, Microsoft uh, software, yes. you will be able to make your website by yourself. So in, in some cases, you know, most of the clients that I made a website for them in, in Wix, for example, um, in the long run, they decide to start, you know, uh, working in their website because finally someone in the family or someone in the team understand a little bit more and they decide to take over. So, which is really, really a, a really good thing, you know, because it's really important to keep up to date your website and, and it's something that also we can do for you. But one of the things that I just want to clarify about this BDC, and I'm always say that, is that we are the spark, but you guys, is your responsibility to keep the fire. You know, we can help you to create your website, your social media, create initial content for you, just to help you to understand the, the dynamics of how to create it by yourself or delegate this to someone. But uh, we can do this, uh, I mean, we can keep forever doing content for you, but we can teach you to create it. So this is our job basically, because if at some point when your business is capable to probably uh, hire some freelancers or a small marketing company to take care about your social media, then that is another uh, good thing to happen because that helps to move the, you know, the economics in the area. So I think that you know, that's why a lot of people start working with this platform lately. Any other questions? Um, this is Elisa Sanchez. Uh, Edward, I just want to say thank you. Um, you've provided us with a lot of good information. I, I took down a lot of notes and um, I, I've got a lot of ideas. I know you said you're the, you're the spark. I, I've got a lot of ideas and I just need some help. So it feels refreshing to know that, that there is um, resources out there because I, I did not know about you until just like two days ago, um, I had reached out to uh, Heather and uh, we've been communicating and haven't touched base yet, but um, I'm just excited to know that this is out there because I, um, when you said you make dreams come true and assist, um, I've got a lot of dreams and I'm, I'm really wanting them to, to come to fruition sooner than later. So I'm, I'm very excited about this. Um, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Is it, um, do we email you, call you? Anyway, you can call me, uh, you know, my phone, my direct phone line is 815-566-1953. Uh, you can send me an email to edward.sbbc at so please feel free to contact us. We love the idea to help you to start a fire. <laughs> we are good for that. So even if we are the spark, but please, you know, sometimes uh, people came to us with two or three ideas and part of our job is help you to figure it out which one could, you know, could be the best. Sometimes we got two or three ideas, but probably won't have a good future. And this is something that we can help you to figure it out. Okay, great, great. And, and now, I look forward to still speaking with you too, Heather. Yeah, we'll, we'll speak and have an initial conversation and then I'm glad you were able to make the call. <laughs> me too. I'm so glad you sent me the invite. This is great. 
<laughs> okay, I, so I will send you a message and we will be in contact very, very uh, soon. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Um, I got a few questions in the chat. Uh, from Noliswi, I need a, hi, I need a website. Uh, please, con, uh, if you want, please give me a call back. We can set up an appointment. Once again, my phone number is 815-566-1953. And I will love to help you to create a website for your business if that is what you're looking for. Once again, uh, all the services that we provide are free of charge. So don't be scared to call me. Um, to, to, to the other question, I have, I already have my employee identification number and sole proprietorship. Um, okay, great. If you have that, we can start to making your website. Um, those are the only questions that I got in the chat. So if you guys don't have any other questions, I guess that we are still free to enjoy the outdoors that is still sunny out there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you very much Bye -bye. for being with us. Enjoy your day, the rest of your day. See you soon, Edward. Take care. <laughs> Thank you, Heather.